All right guys, so welcome to Hollywood Mechanic. Today we're gonna to be talking about cars and how cars can kind of show us where we're falling short in society. Okay, in the car industry, there's something, a common saying of not my car. If you are a valet or if you're a mechanic or a porter, and you're dealing with someone else's vehicles and you bang the door into a pole or you miss a gear or you stall it trying to move it. Not my car, <laughs> as in it's not my problem. Go to a dealership shop, you will hear it on a daily basis. Oh, not my car. <laughs> and it just is kind of something we all laugh about, but honestly, it's revealing of a deeper problem. Where else do we see cars? indicating a bigger problem well, on the road. You know when you're driving on the freeway and there's that guy going 60 in the far left lane? Or honestly, my favorite is when you have three cars driving the same speed in three different lanes for a long time. Or maybe when you go to pass someone who's going slower than you, and then as soon as you get next to them, they speed up to go faster than you want it to go, and then you get right behind them just for them to slow down again. Or how no one uses a turn signal. Like, it would be helping you to use a turn signal, but no one does. I've noticed people who lease their cars don't service them. All these problems are very evident in the car world, and they all relate to the same thing and it's selfishness, putting yourself above everyone else. Now this is a major, major problem. So selfishness, when it begins to take over society, it's often a predictor of its coming demise. There's a book called How Rome Fell by Adrian Goldsworthy. And in page 418 and 419, he goes on to talk about how it's only human nature to lose sight of the wider issues and focus on immediate concerns and personal aims. In the late Roman Empire, this was so often all about personal survival and advantage bringing wealth and influence to oneself, which rendered the individual more prominent and a greater target to others. What does this mean? Basically, when you put yourself above everyone else, you become the target, especially if everyone around you is selfish and trying to put themselves first. You're just putting yourself out there for attack. <laughs> In today's society, we see selfishness everywhere. But let's go back to even before Rome. Back when man was evolving, what really helped man to survive was religion. Now, I, I'm not a religious channel. I'm not trying to force religion on you, but let's just look at the great civilizations in every continent. All of them had a religion that at the core taught about love and treating others as you would yourself or putting others first. Now, why is this important? If you are, let's say, fighting wild animals and you're going to go off and do that by yourself, it's much harder than if you have a group of people who can all get together and build a wall around your civilization and take turns sleeping while others man that wall to preserve your survival. But what happens is when you lose sight of a common goal and a common good and start putting yourself first, you're willing to do anything to make sure that you you succeed, which means seriously undermining those around you. And when we undermine those around us, it causes major problems. Let's look at the traffic, for instance. You know, the main cause of accidents on the freeway are lane changes. I mean, when you lane change, you are moving into another lane and you have a known thing called a blind spot. And so the more lane changes happen, the more likely there are to be accidents. And for that reason, the law states that slower traffic must go in the right lane and all passing must be done on the left. This is the way that the Autobahn works. The Autobahn only works because everyone immediately moves back to the right lane and they know if someone's passing, it will always be on the left. But if you drive around in America, you see people just cruising in. This is my favorite lane. I'm in the third one. I'm isolated from oncoming traffic by the fourth lane, but I'm not in the slow lane where people are merging on and off of exits. And this is just where I feel comfortable. But the problem is if you feel comfortable going 70 miles an hour in that third lane and someone wants to go 80, yeah, they're speeding, but guess what? It doesn't bother you. It doesn't matter. Let them speed. They're going to speed, but if you're in that third lane, then they have to swerve maybe around into the second or even first lane to make that pass. And those lane changes cause the person that they're changing lanes in front of to tap their brakes, which causes brake light ripple, which causes traffic slowdown, which eventually will cause an accident, 
which causes everyone to lose because you think it doesn't matter if I ride slow in the third lane, it doesn't affect me. But somewhere ahead of you, there's another jackass doing the same thing. And that's the reason for your morning commute. Wait, you know when we see those three cars stacked side by side, but we all care about the environment, right? Well, guess what? If two of those people would get in line behind the first guy, the other two could save a ton of gas, a ton of pollution and, and greenhouse gases would be saved if we would get in a line. I mean, look at every single race in the world, whether it's runners, bicyclists, or cars, they all get in a straight line until they're ready to make the pass because that's what's best for the car, for the team, for the runner, so it's most efficient. But we try to put ourselves first and we end up hurting the environment and even hurting ourselves but we've lost sight of it because we're selfish in the car industry we're seeing it a lot with business as well capitalism is always touted as being better than communism and the reason for that is is if you're in a communistic society where you have to put everyone else first it's hard to motivate you to do your best it's like whatever i'm not going to advance so i'm just going to do whatever and that's what people love about capitalism the problem with capitalism is it needs oversight because humans are greedy and without that oversight we have something like massive planned obsolescence you know a 20 year old Toyota Corolla is worth more than a 10 year old BMW X5 despite the fact that it sells at half the price when it's new why is that BMW says hey not my client they say people who buy from us lease or buy a new car every five years so if a car lasts longer than that whoever's buying it, it's not my client I don't care and so for that reason they they say if our car lasts longer than five years uh we're wasting money we're putting too much engineering into something and then not getting anything back from it and in a cap capitalistic society you have an obligation to shareholders to make the most money possible so if you were to choose to abandon that practice and make a better product you might even get thrown off the board of directors but if we look at the value of car companies toyota is the most valuable car company in the world it's worth 59.47 billion dollars which means hey maybe if we look to the long term and we make a morally sound good long-lasting product it is the right thing to do even for our own well-being what i say is it's on us as an individual to determine that we're going to live our life based on rules morals and the good of all because if we don't it will literally destroy us all and cause all of us to suffer but yet still we're just sitting here going not my car not my traffic problem not not my problem and this is a major issue and i think we should get better at this you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody. And so you must be involved in the struggle for freedom and justice.